Let's see if we can get a little closer. Oh, I just hit a button. Which I'm not sure what button I just hit. I think I shut the engines down, maybe? Yeah, they do sound like they're shutting down. Yeah, I'm not really sure what to do in this situation, so I am going to start over. Welcome back, Coney is here. Today I'm flying from Fort Wayne, Indiana to Chicago O'Hare Airport. I'll be flying at a flight level of 3,000 feet. I'm flying a Beechcraft King Air 350i. Let's go ahead and get started. Let's set that flight level to 3,000. Alright, take off the parking brake and let's get going. Still working on trying to make this a nice smooth go down the runway. Let's go ahead and take off and stay straight, you know, during the whole takeoff. Often I find myself way off for the left or right. Alright, so we're gaining some altitude. Landing gear no longer usable, so let's bring those up. Tower KH441 continue for west departure. And then go ahead and begin turning in the direction of Chicago. And bring up those flaps. Pull back on the stick. Almost steered into the correct direction. Bring the flaps up all the way. I think maybe they might already have been all the way up. Okay. Going to stop climbing because we're at altitude. Tower KH441 frequency change. Approach KH441 is type Beechcraft King Air Tree, miles west of FT Wayne, 3,000 feet. Request clearance to transition Charlie airspace. KH441 approach. Squawk 0634. Squawk 0634 KH441. KH441 radar contact 5 miles west of MT Wayne 3200 feet. Okay, I'm going to bring the throttle back to just a little under 50%. Nose down a bit to get back down to 3,000. Cleared through the Charlie airspace KH441. And at this point, I'll turn over to autopilot. It's going to make the final course correction. This is my second attempt at this flight. Earlier I was flying and I accidentally hit a button on my throttle stick that auto shut down the engines and I didn't know how to recover from that. Um, it'd be interesting to find out what you do in that situation. Uh, I didn't know how to stop the auto start sequence or auto stop sequence and I was heading towards a crash and so I just exited. But it would be interesting to find out how to actually deal with that situation. I probably could have... 
controlled the aircraft and maybe found a landing strip somewhere or a field to land in. Uh, it wasn't clear to me if you had to wait for the engines to stop shutting down before you could start them up again. And I wasn't even sure how to start them up, so I need to learn a little bit about that. But at some point I do want to turn on failures like that and have them happen randomly and be able to recover from them. I think that'd be a fun aspect of the game. Once I'm feeling a little bit more natural about flying in general. Plane is still making course corrections. Like it's going to be flat land like this the, pretty much the whole way. Obviously agricultural, probably a lot of corn, other stuff. interesting to see what this area supposedly looks like with all the satellite data, photogrammetry data, everything put together. It's probably pretty close to real. Well, it could be interesting to play with the drone a little bit. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to need more speed. Can 
an interesting body of water here. Some baseball diamonds and whatnot. sure where exactly this is. Feel like a nice little lake though to have fun in. Warsaw Municipal. Oh there's our shadow going by. Kind of interesting looking colorful buildings over here. I thought I'd go take a look. A little tricky with the plane filling us forward. I have to jostle with the stick to try to maintain a stable view. But I just thought that was interesting. All the red roof stuff. Um, kind of looks like the photogrammetry data has the red and then the AI used that to create the red roofs. That's interesting. Maybe these are some kind of school or, yeah, it looks like a school. Alright, let's go back to the plane. Check on the plane. That everything looks all right. Weather seems pretty nice. On my first attempt, the weather was actually kind of lousy. I don't know if the fog burned off, or I suspect there might be a bug when you save and reload a flight plan. It doesn't uh, switch to the proper, accurate live weather. Maybe I don't know. This might be the right weather, it's beautiful. The date today is May 15th, and in this area it would be noon. Having a much better time with frame rate and dropouts or stalls or whatever um, stutters, I guess is what the what they call them. After switching to high instead of ultra and ensuring I'm running the overclocking software, it seems to be pretty good. I had gotten down to I don't know four frames a second at one point in one of my flights, which felt a little scary.
just nice to look around and see things from different angles. Switch back to the drone and reset it. Alright, well that was a little bit of emer almost emergency there. Oh, what happened was, I was playing with the drone, and I tried to switch to the internal view while I was already holding onto the left joystick. Now while you're using the drone, the left joystick moves the drone around, but in any other view, the left joystick is your flight stick. So what happened is, suddenly the airplane started going nuts because I was controlling it. it. It went up in altitude, it dropped in speed. When I got back to the plane view, it was getting near stalling. It was going to be a disaster. I just switched autopilot back on and it corrected everything and I've been managing the throttle, so it's back to normal. Uh, so just something to be aware of. You really have to be careful with that 360 controller and that left stick because it'll crash the plane. You also have to be careful switching to it if you've turned it on after you started. I noticed when I did that it imposed different settings on the throttle and suddenly that caused problems during flight. So I try to make sure to have it powered on now when I start up my flights. So that was an interesting, scary moment, but we seem to be okay. Of course it's a simulator, so no real damage is possible. We go back up to midway on the throttle, try to gain some speed here. What I was trying to do is switch to the inside view while looking at the drone, but you can't go here directly, I don't think. And because I had tried to switch to the inside view, it's interpreted as something like switching to a different canned 
showcase view? I don't know. Anyway, it just it did not work. Or maybe it was a canned external view. Uh, but we seem to be okay now. Go to my perch view here for a minute. Backside, go back outside of I mean, the room. Another small local airport. That funny colored field is interesting, some kind of a different material. Okay, I'm going to reset the drone on the plane. Just get a little closer and look at some of this stuff as we go by.
Okay, back to the plane. Now we're hitting this body of water I mentioned before. Take a moment to sip some coffee from my simulated pilot's thermos. I just purchased an ultralight. It's the Topper T3, I think it's called. It was 10 bucks at the marketplace. I haven't flown it yet. It's single pilot, open cockpit. Should be really interesting to give it a try. I'll post a video once I've flown it. I have a feeling we'll be over the water for a while. Okay, back inside. It is time to begin slowing down. We're going to be landing soon. I'm going to pull back on the throttle. Maybe to about 30%. Pull it down a bit. I'm going to pull back some more.
interesting seeing the city in the background. Looks like we'll be flying right over it. Okay, a little bit more pull back on the throttle. Let's go down to about I guess 13 percent. There goes a plane. Decimal two for KH441. Chicago approach KH441. Okay, I know this is a busy airspace. I need to take over from autopilot. Four four one Chicago approach. Continue as planned. Altimeter two nine or decimal nine two. And we need to start descending. Keep the nose down enough to see the airport off in the distance. And my drop in altitude is competing with my slowdown. We still only have a small amount of thrust, so we should continue to slow down for a while. Make brief visits to the external view. Wow, that's amazing. When I'm flying the plane myself, I'm trying to stay in the cockpit so I can keep the realism and keep my bearings on the equipment I'm looking at and everything. But I will switch to the external view occasionally. Uh, I'd like to slow down some more. I'm gonna pull back further on the throttle. Not enough that it warns me about the landing gear yet. Uh, I can slow down a bit at this point by nosing up. Okay, and then my goal was to put the flaps down. Of course, you have to push on the stick because it's going to want to give you all that lift. Request clearance to transition Converting Bravo forward airspace. thrust and thrust into lift. Okay, I don't Clear see the airport, the so let's airspace. nose down. Wow, that's a beautiful view. water so far. Try to do this and maintain safety and everything at the same time. It's amazing. It's iconic Chicago buildings. A little hard to fly manually do this all at the same time, but wow, what an amazing view. Okay, let's go back to that. I don't know, do the, the airplanes actually come in over the skyscrapers? I kind of doubt it. That is just amazing. Alright, well anyway, I'm getting off course. Let's go back inside and let's get prepared to land this thing. Landing gear down. We'll stay on flaps halfway down for now.
Alright, everything looks good. Copilot will announce shortly. I don't want to lose too much altitude yet, so windows up a tad. Also going to give us just a t little bit more Tower throttle to do so. Tower KH441 is one, one mile southeast with India to land. KH441 tower. Make straight in runway 28 right. Altimeter 29 or decimal 9 or 2 wind 229 or at 5. Fly straight in runway 28 right KH441. Alright, there's the entrance. Okay, we do need to slow down a bit. I'm going to put the flaps down the rest of the way and then push the throttle and the stick. Throttle's now at the halfway point. I feel like we're going a bit slow, but I don't think this is a problem. I can always give it more thrust, more nose down. All these densely packed houses. Wow. Okay, I'm going to pull back a bit on the throttle. We're going to start descending. We'll pick up speed and start going too fast unless I pull back on the thrust. Pull back a bit more. And then I'm going to turn and try to stick towards the right side. Keep my eye centered on the runway if I can. KH441 clear to land runway 28 right. Wind 229 at 5. to land runway to eight right KH441. Okay, I'm gonna give it some more thrust because we're going just a bit too slow, I think. Might be what that beeping was telling me. Okay, pulling back on the thrust now because I feel like we're in a good descent angle and picking up some speed. better job of getting centered on the runway. Too fast, yep. Let's pull back on the throttle some more. So about 20% probably. I'm going to pull back even more. Try to get the speed down, keep it down. Okay, so we want to go a little slower. Try to hit the runway before we actually stall, like at the moment of, s of stalling. And so that means a lot more speed to drop, but still. I'm going to go to throttle all the way down, see what that does for us. My nose up. Five hundred. 
Yeah, we'll need some more thrust to keep going. Always feels a little hairy, but it can be done. Just have to keep modulating the throttle a bit, give it some little puffs of thrust. Coming in a little low, I think. Okay, let's get here and then try to hover for a bit. Difficult to tell exactly where you are in relation to the runway, but Garmin helps. Okay, let's try to th hover some more. Before I run out of runway. Okay, we'll bring it down. Brakes, nose down. Look for the place to leave. I think we can leave right here. Differential braking, a little rudder action, puddles, uh, pedals are still working really well. Okay, we need some more thruster. After my uh, solder fix. I'm also resetting the power cycle on them before using them, that seems to help as well. It looks like the circuit that reads the potentiometer is kind of uh, dynamic and it can get off and doesn't recover. Alright, so I've got the brakes on. Let's contact ground. Taxi ground KH441 request taxi to parking. KH441 taxi to general aviation parking using taxiway in November 4 Foxtrot Alpha 1 5 Delta Alpha 1 9 Bravo Papa Papa cross runway 27 left Papa Papa. Wow, that's a lot of changes. Taxiing to general aviation parking using taxiway November 4 Fox Traps up. Alpha Alpha One Niner Bravo Papa Papa cross runway 27 left Papa Papa KH4. It's a little easier to do this from the inside, and again, it enforces the realism. Anticipating being told to stop and hold at some point. I think this is one of the world's biggest airports. It looks familiar. I know I've been here when I was a kid, but that's a long time ago. Some kind of a zebra painted 
jet fighter to the left. I think I still have to yeah, I still have to cross a runway. I'm way over on the other side of the airport. Airport seems very flat. Like, you don't have to worry about rolling. It just seems to want to roll fine. It's another one of those zebra aircraft. Interesting. Okay, their timing's better this time. Roger KH441. Sometimes um, you're told to hold and then nothing happens and then I'll just eventually go because I'm stuck. If you're on a real airport I would get fined for something like that. But Um, this, it feels very easy to taxi on this airport surface. I think, like I said, it's very flat, and so um, everything feels very reliable and easy to do. It's probably not very windy either, and it's probably helping. Okay, it seems like I should hold and look before going and crossing this runway. Okay, I think I'm good. A whole bunch of planes parked over on the right, it looks like. Wow. Really would be nice if you could get out on foot and go and get into some other airplane and fly it off. Okay, this part doesn't exactly look flat, but that's okay. I'm still finding the surface very easy to drive on. I'm going to stop and hold and look down the runway. And I think they would have alerted me, but it still feels like... It feels weird to just go and not look first. are a little easier to judge, I feel like, in first person. Especially using the pedals and a combination of steering and left and right braking. Alright, getting close. I think I have it in sight, finally. Well, this makes it look like we're going so slow. How slow are we going? Now this is fine. Usually I'm taxiing way too fast, but this is fine. We're under
or 30, which is plenty slow enough. And that's an interesting view. Try the uh, overhead. Eh, it's not as interesting. It's a little hard to see where the arrow is. Maybe the uh, standing up view. Looks like my turn takes me th through where that other aircraft is, um, so I might just steer right into it right here. Okay, now this part is easier from the outside. Okay, nice slow roll into position. I had a much easier time going slow today for some reason. Okay, so let's put the parking brake on. And let's shut the engines off. Sounded like off. Turn off the plane. That's it. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to share, like, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video. Okay, we could probably be going a little faster. I'm going to throttle up. Let's see if we can get a little closer. Oh, I just hit a button. Which... I'm not sure what button I just hit. So, whatever I just did... What, what did I just do? Oil pressure. Did I shut the engine off or something? I'm not sure what... I thought that was the landing gear, but no, it's not. So I'm not sure what button I have that assigned to. Let's look outside and see if I can figure out... And the landing gear are fine. I think I shut the engines down, maybe? Not necessarily a good thing to do. Yeah, they do sound like they're shutting down. Yeah, I'm not really sure what to do in this situation, so I am going to start over.